Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare, sometimes self-care, and today we're talking about the top 10 things I want you to know as a Tretinoin user. Whether you're just beginning your journey with Tretinoin or you've been using it for a long time, these are 10 things that are so important to remember no matter where you are on your journey. This video is sponsored by Dermatica. They're an online dermatology provider where you can get your prescription strength tretinoin delivered right to your door. So if you're so ready to find out my 10 tips, give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. So as you know, tretinoin is a prescription ingredient. You do need to go through a doctor in order to get it. And that can be kind of tricky. Where I live, dermatology appointments are super booked out. My insurance doesn't really cover it. It can be very expensive. And so I love online services because like I said, it's easy, it's affordable, and it's just really accessible. I also love that they do compound formulas at Dermatica. So you're getting two active ingredients that are custom for your skin and your skin goals. So not only am I getting 0.05% of tretinoin, which is what I've been using for a while now, and I've started my tretinoin journey three years ago, but I'm also getting 8% of azelaic acid, which I've been using since about 2015 to keep my congested skin really clear. It was really life-changing for me when I started using this ingredient so many years ago, and it's affordable. You're gonna get two bottles shipped at a time for a two-month supply, and that's $59.60 that's billed every every two months, which is so much less than going into the doctor's office, at least for me personally. I found my provider to be really responsive and very helpful um, and very personable in our communications. It's been really easy whenever I have a question um, to just quickly you know, send a message and I get answers back. Like I said, thoughtful, personalized, and very quickly. And that's an important um, feature of any dermatology service. It really stuck out to me that they really help you every step of the way, especially if you're a beginner. I think that that can be really make or break for you know being successful, especially with an ingredient like tretinoin. And Dermatica is available outside of the United States. That's the thing with a lot of the dermatology providers online. You know, I've tried quite a few of them in the past. One of the reasons I wanted to specifically try Dermatica is because they are available outside of the United States. So you can also receive these services in the United Kingdom, in Germany, in Finland, Denmark, Cyprus, Greece, Malta, Sweden, and in Germany. So if they cover your area and you're interested, I have a code. Kelly D will save you on your first month. It'll only cost you $4.99 for your very first month of Dermatica, and your second month will be 10% off. So let's jump into the 10 things I need you to know about tretinoin, and the very first one is KISS which stands for keep it simple, silly. This is really great advice to heed because it is tempting to really complicate your skincare routine, especially if you're really working on goals like um, helping to clear up your skin from breakouts and acne, or you're working on your well aging goals and you wanna target you know, your skin elasticity, fine lines and wrinkles. It's really tempting to try to throw everything you know, at your skin all at once to really accelerate your results. Tretinoin is an incredibly potent ingredient, and I sometimes refer to it as an aggressive ingredient. It does have a lot of side effects that can result in a lot of dryness, tightness, irritation, and dehydration on the skin. And so you don't want to layer on lots of other actives that could make that issue even worse. So I'm talking about ingredients like AHAs, BHAs, like salicylic acid, benzyl peroxide, vitamin C. These are ingredients that we can save for our other routines when we're not directly applying tretinoin to our face. But in the routine that you are using tretinoin, keep it simple. Really just focus in on balancing out your skin, moisturizing it and applying tretinoin and trusting that tretinoin is gonna do a lot of the heavy work. Speaking of balance, that's the number two thing I want you to remember is to balance out your skin type in any of the skincare routines that you're creating, but especially the one that you're applying tretinoin in. You really wanna focus on that. Really let's, yeah, like I said in step number one, let's forget about all the other actives, but let's focus in on balancing out our skin with water and with moisturizing ingredients or oil. And that balance is going to be different depending on your skin type. So if you have a very oily skin type, you want to focus a little bit more in on the hydrating ingredients. Those are really going to help balance out your oily skin, which in turn is going to help your skin
can accept the tretinoin a lot better and sidestep a lot of those dryness and irritation side effects. Now, if you have really dry skin, on the other hand, you really wanna focus in on those really emollient moisturizing ingredients oils and creams and emulsions, anything that's really going to help up the amount of oil in your skin, because that's what dry skin is lacking is oil. Um, hydrating ingredients are going to be helpful too, but the bulk of your, you know, your attention should be on really nourishing your skin with moisture. And if you have combination skin, you know that it is somewhere in the middle. You need both. You need a balance of watery hydration and a balance of nourishing moisturizing ingredients. And if you have a normal skin type, you're pretty lucky you probably don't have to do a ton of this but keep your eye on your skin type as you're using tretinoin because your normal skin might veer a little bit more dry which is a hint to you to add some more oil, uh, oil or moisturizing ingredients you might also feel some tightness in your skin which is going to be a sign to add in some more hydration third thing i want you to know is to not apply too much of your tretinoin cream the uh, standard advice is to apply a pea size amount and i know that that can be kind of confusing because there's a lot of different sizes of peas out there right so one of my tips for you if you're just really feeling out the perfect amount for your skin is to put a very small amount I'm not even saying a full pump of your Dermatica cream here but just a, a really small amount start with that and and not just like rub it onto your face but actually dot it in zones your two cheeks your chin, your nose, and your forehead. Dot it out and then um, really rub it in or gently, you know what I mean? Um, apply it to your face because that is going to allow the cream to spread in a more even layer across your face than if you were to just take that pea size amount and just slather it. Um, it is likely that you will end up needing more and you will end up over applying the cream. The fourth thing I want you to know is moisturizer is your very best friend when you're using tretinoin. Look, it's a really cute key and important part of any skincare routine, but when you're using tretinoin, it is really important to get the, the right one. <laughs> Something that is really going to help nourish your skin, um, not only at the beginning of your journey with tretinoin as your skin is adapting, that's when you see a lot of the dryness and the flaking and the peeling, but even if you're further in your journey and you're stepping up in percentage, sometimes that process can happen all over again with the dryness. But of course, moisturizer in the long run with consistent use just helps keep your skin moisturized while you're using tretinoin in your routines. So if you haven't found a really great one yet for your skin type, I've actually already done a video covering all different skin types and my moisturizer recommendations specifically for the tretinoin journey. So check it out if you don't have a great one just yet. The fifth thing I want you to know is to not underestimate tretinoin. I see this time and time again. People really underestimate how powerful of an ingredient this really is. When I was explaining the pea size amount, I wonder if you were thinking that tiny amount of cream is not going to be enough for me and it is there's no way that it can show me the results that I'm looking for. If you were thinking that, I want you to really sit with that and question that because tretinoin is an incredibly potent ingredient. It can do so much for the skin. It's a cell communicating ingredient. So it, when you apply it to your skin, it actually is communicating to your cells to to behave in a more youthful way, to help to shed the dead skin cells faster off of the skin, to help regulate the oil production on the skin. It can help to stimulate collagen, telling our body to make more collagen and elastin, which really helps with the fine line benefits. It can do so much for the skin because it's communicating to our body to do better. So it's not just about where you apply it, how you apply it, how much you apply it. It's it's not just the cream that's doing the work here, it's communicating to your body. It is also incredibly, incredibly, incredibly potent. A small amount will absolutely work well for your skin. And in fact, too much is very detrimental and can backfire on you. So if you've ever wondered if you're, you know, that small amount is not doing anything for you, if you've ever worried about tretinoin being able to, um, you know, absorb into the skin through multiple layers of skincare, do not worry. 
It is a very potent ingredient. It will get to where it needs to go. It will tell your skin cells what to do. Trust this ingredient. Do not underestimate it. The sixth thing I want you to know is a tip if you are experiencing irritation. If tretinoin is just making your skin feel so uncomfortable, so dry, so flaky, red and irritated, I would encourage you to apply your tretinoin cream 30 minutes after completing your entire skincare routine. Waiting 30 minutes allows all of your skincare layers to absorb into your skin and you're starting off with skin that is a little bit drier. It's not damp or moist from your other skincare layers. And when your skin is damp, it actually increases the absorption of what you're putting on top of it. That's why you see that advice for layering skincare products is to apply it onto damp skin because it really cuts down on that thickness and stickiness and it helps it absorb into your skin better. It's no different with tretinoin, but because it is such a potent ingredient, if your skin is damp and you're speeding up the absorption, it actually just kind of like slams in your skin really fast and it can up the amount of irritation that you are that you're experiencing. So like I said, if your side effects are really bad, you're having a hard time adjusting, do your entire skincare routine, apply your final moisturizer, and then go away and do something else for at least 30 minutes, if not longer. And then like right before you go to bed, apply your pea size amount of tretinoin. You can also mix a little bit more moisturizer into it to kind of help buffer it a little bit. Um, but that is going to um, help it from slamming into your skin. It's gonna slow that process down. It doesn't slow down the results or the effectiveness, but it does slow down the amount of irritation. My seventh tip is to avoid the eye area, the nose area, as well as the lips. The skin on these areas is a lot thinner and it is a lot more prone to irritation. It's very common when you're starting tretinoin for the side effects, that redness and flakiness and irritation to be a lot worse, especially around the nose. Um, it can uh, definitely really dry out and make the under eye area feel um, very, very uncomfortable. And if you get it on your lips, forget about it. They are full blown irritated, right? So one of my tips for helping to avoid these areas, because sometimes, you know, it's hard to avoid the um, nose area or underneath the eye, use a little bit of your moisturizer or if you like to use something that is petrolatum based like the CeraVe Healing Ointment, apply a small amount of that onto your lips, maybe even a little bit on top of the border of your lips, around your nose and underneath your eye, maybe even on top. If you are prone to just kind of like rubbing your cream a little haphazardly, hey, I am <laughs> sometimes, this can really help if you accidentally go over those areas. The extra amount of moisturizer or or the petrolatum based product is going to kind of block in a way the um, the tretinoin, the petrolatum will really block it because it's very occlusive. The moisturizer will just kind of ease it um, into the skin so it's less likely to cause irritation. So if you've had really bad irritation in those areas in the past, I would say use petrolatum over moisturizer. But these are ways that um, can help you even if you accidentally go over those areas that can really help to sidestep the flakiness, the redness, and the uncomfortable skin. My eighth tip is about your neck and chest area. Now this one is kind of up for debate because some people feel that pulling your tretinoin cream down to your neck and chest is incredibly beneficial, but the skin on your neck and chest behave differently than the skin on your face. And so even if you are tolerating your tretinoin cream really, really well, you may not be able to tolerate it on your neck and chest. I have um, seen so many people who have gotten a lot of peeling, redness and irritation on their neck from using knowing um, in those areas because it's just a skin that behaves differently. So my advice here is not really this or that or do or don't. It really is about um, experimentation and learning what works for you. If you are interested in the benefits that tretinoin can provide for your neck and chest, try it, but be aware that it could cause a lot of flaking and peeling and irritation. Um, it can also cause a lot of sun sensitivity, which I'm gonna cover soon. Um, so it may not be something that you really want to, to do. What I would suggest in that case, if tretinoin's not working for your neck and chest, but you want similar benefits, go for an over-the-counter retinol or retinaldehyde product. I really like the beauty of Josan Revive um, Retinol and Ginseng 
eye serum. It actually can be used in other places. They do give you a pretty generous size for an eye cream. And this is gonna be um, a little bit of a gentler option that you can use to get the same collagen stimulating benefits, the same skin cell turnover benefits. They're gonna help keep uh, things like your chest, maybe if you experience breakouts, help keep breakouts at bay, but also to address um, potentially fine lines, wrinkles, and loss of elasticity. And I mentioned a retinol or a retinol to hide cream for your eye area. That's also something, you know, saying avoid the eye area. That doesn't mean that you don't, you can't get those benefits with um, gentler versions of retinoids. Tretinoin, retinol, retinol to hide, they're all in the same family. Um, but the over-the-counter versions are a lot more gentle, particularly the ones that have been formulated for the eye area. Those can absolutely help to stimulate collagen production in that delicate eye area, but sidestep a lot of the harshness of the full-blown tretinoin prescription. The ninth thing I want you to remember when you're using tretinoin is sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. Wear it every day. <laughs> It's so important, and you know, we're always talking about it. It's kind of exhausting, right, to hear it, but also to talk about it sometimes in skincare. We know it's like the number one skincare product. We know it's the number one anti-aging product that we can be using. We know, we know, we know. We know the importance, but when you're using tretinoin, it absolutely 100% is making your skin so much more photosensitive. It means that you are gonna get more irritation and itchiness, potentially burning your skin in the sun than when you weren't using tretinoin. And I learned this the hard way when I first started using tretinoin. You really need to step up your sunscreen game. There is a common misperception around tretinoin and retinoids in general that you need to apply them at night in order to avoid the sun sensitivity. And while it's true that applying your tretinoin or your retinoid products at nighttime is more beneficial for a multitude of reasons, and it is true that retinoids can degrade when they are exposed to UV light. Although formulation is so sophisticated now, there are truly retinal, um, retinoid products that you can apply during the daytime because of how it's been formulated and stabilized. That's a different conversation. The misconception that you have to apply it at night in order to avoid sun sensitivity is just not true. Once you've applied tretinoin to your skin, remember it's that cell communicating ingredient that speeds up the skin cell turnover process. So just because you applied it um, and then you wash your face in the morning or whatever, the effects of tretinoin have not been washed off. Um, your, skin, your skin cells have been communicated to you. They are shedding those dead skin cells quicker and that can make that newer skin that is exposed a lot more sensitive to the sun and that means your photosensitivity from just one application not consistent use one application can last as long as 14 days so it's not like, oh, well, I put it on at night so I don't have to wear sunscreen in the morning. Uh -uh. We're not getting around that. You absolutely need to step up your sunscreen uh, game, wear absolutely every single day, um, especially if you're regularly using tretinoin because your skin is just going to be more sensitive to the sun and that's just the way that it is. Sunscreen is the tool that we can use to protect our skin and really to help protect the results that we're getting with tretinoin. And the 10th thing I want you to know about tretinoin is that it is a marathon, not a race. This is a mindset I really encourage you to embrace no matter where you are in your tretinoin journey, and it can be a hard one. I think when we're into you know any skincare journey, we really want results and we're really itching to get them as fast as possible. Whether you're picking up a tretinoin to help clear up your skin from congestion, breakouts, and pimples, or maybe you're using tretinoin to address the signs of aging on your skin, I know that you are really looking for results, but I want to remind you that that consistency is key, going slow is key. This is a marathon. You do not need to race to the end. So don't be too concerned about percentages. You know, uh, you are gonna start your tretinoin journey at a lower percentage, and you will probably work yourself up, but I don't want you to be too concerned about getting yourself to the highest percentage available as fast as possible. It is not necessarily going to accelerate the results that you're seeing on your skin. It's not really like, yeah, a race 
to, to the highest percentage. And in fact, sometimes the highest percentage is not appropriate in all cases. And I see so many people go through so much pain and irritation, frustration, um, and really backfiring their results by trying to up the percentage too fast while really ignoring what their skin is telling them. And so just remember that, you know, tretinoin is not a short term thing for most of us. We are going to be using this cream for a very long time. We have time. The other thing I see people um, really get obsessive over is how many nights a week you should be applying it. And this, you know, is going to be dependent on your skin. This is something that um, you really need to feel out with how your skin is doing with the cream. Um, because I honestly think that consistency is so much more important than frequency. Be consistent. Even if you're using your tretinoin cream two times a week for six months, you are going to see results. And it's absolutely um, going going to uh, not be a great thing if you are using it one night a week and then you forget it for a week and then you do it four times a week and then your skin feels really irritated so you don't do it for like two more weeks and then you're back to two. That inconsistency is absolutely going to mess around with your results. Whatever the consistency that feels right for your skin is going to be the right journey for you. So don't be too concerned about, I have to get this cream on my skin every single night or every other night, or I'm only able to tolerate it two to three nights a week. Why can't I do more? Don't be too concerned about that. Really embrace that this is a marathon, that this is a journey, and that we're just taking things one step at a time. But do remember that consistency is really important, but listening to your your skin needs and following that is the most important thing above all. Thank you so much to Dermatica for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in getting started with your own custom formula, maybe with some tretinoin in it, I do have a discount code that will um, save you so much money on your first month. It's only $4.99 for your first month and then 10% off on your second month. If you're interested, the discount code and the link are in the description box. I'm curious if you're using tretinoin or if you're using retinoids, what are your um, personal tips and things you want people to know about this journey? Journey, let us all know in the comments below. If these uh, tips helped you out, but you haven't hit subscribe, please, I would be so honored if you would subscribe to my channel. Come join the community, especially if you're into well aging and gentle skincare. I do release a lot of new videos throughout the week and I do shorts too, so definitely turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop. I really hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I can't wait to talk to you in the next video. I love you so much. Bye.